hi there. This is Jim the Keys bartender. I just mentioned the uh, weather was changing. Do you notice? The weather is changing. It was, it's been really comfortable the last couple yes, of days. It was. Thank God. Right? Yep. Yes. I mean, the days of 112 to 120 degree heat index. <laughs> yep. Enough of that shit. It was perfect you think timing. You get in your car and your your ass doesn't. Now it's comfortable. Stick your seat. It's been very comfortable. Like that. There was a, there's been a nice breeze. A little bit of a breeze. It's a nice little bit of a boner, but, uh, but there's last, been a nice breeze. Last couple of mornings. What did you say? So a boner. It's been a boner. Stiff, Wait, is that good or bad? Stiff breeze. No. Oh, <laughs> really? I don't know. Just... Wait, the breeze is not breezy. Well, it can't be like... a bad thing if you get a boner when you just don't. No, really well, but need wait, it. wait, wait. <laughs> oh, because it's not windy. Yeah, it's it's because so, it's um, it's kind of still, you know. Okay, okay. The weather's not so hot. The weather's not so hot. Okay. Well, I, didn't know, I think uh, it's comfortable temperature, though. You just don't know. You know what it is? It is. It would be even more comfortable if there was a little breeze. But we are here in this salad It might days, be more I comfortable if we had boners. <laughs> well, give me a few minutes, honey, and I'll work on that. I, I, I uh, listened to a meditation. It was called I Am Horny. Oh, my gosh. I am horny. No, no. It's You sound like Dory. It was, <laughs> it was, it was an affirmation. I am so horny. I have lots of uh, something, something. I can do this and I can do that. And I go, wow, this is what works for people and stuff like that. I'm thinking, you know, instead of using any. Like, I am smart. Yes. I am courageous. And I think gosh what, darn it, people like me. And, gosh, no, that's <laughs> right. That's, uh, that's Stuart right. Stuart Smalley. Stuart Smalley. <laughs> And by golly, people like me. No, I, I believe that does. Uh, well, I mean, if you think about it with people that are overconfident, that's exactly the record that's playing in their head. You know, I told, remember that, the bell of the ball? I told you yeah. that story about the girl that was the bell of the ball? She was not the bell of the ball. She wasn't even the prettiest girl but among she... the two, with the two 70-year-old ladies. And she was the girl who was 15, 16 years old. She wasn't the prettiest girl there. But she thought she was. Well, because they were telling her. Yeah. And she thought, she goes, oh, my gosh, you're going to be the bell of the ball. And I go, wow. Well, what? I mean, I don't want to puncture someone's balloon or that thing, but that's pretty good. That's I think that's good. But someone, do you, think about it. Think about going through life with an overabounding confidence in your abilities. I met people like that. Isn't that really? indicative, though, of a very insecure personality, generally speaking? Well, I think it's a balanced p- approach you should have. I think there's a very balanced approach. Because, obviously, it's not like that fucking Holiday Inn commercial, Holiday Inn Express. Yeah. That you're going to go and do brain surgery and stuff like that. But you're willing to try new things and not be nervous of as long as it's not – the outcome isn't critical that you're able to do your best and not be nervous about your performance. That's the balancing part, but you're not going to be able to obviously, uh, well, that's may not necessarily true. So people like Mozart and, and some prodigies can go and do things the first time and, and it could be brilliant, but that's a specific type of ability that doesn't always show up. But I'm talking about the, I always had, uh, whenever anything, when someone was going to, we do training any place, and whether when I was in the Navy, when I was at Treasury, when I was in a software company, when someone has said, ask for volunteers for something new, I would volunteer first. Now, why do you think I did that? That's a good. I know why I would do do it and why, why I did uh, why? because you get yeah uh, sedate in the in the role that you're in. You want something more challenging. You you, you know it's an opportunity to to, to experience well, let's say it's a in different front of, aspect. Well, they, of, let's say it's in a display in front of a group of people. Why would I be exuberant? And I'll tell you, it wasn't because I thought I could do it. I'll tell you why. Why? It was strategic. I was the first one to do it. So if I failed, I didn't see anybody else do it yet, right? Yeah, you never remember the first one that did the it. The first always... one that did it, 
you go up there and you volunteer. Whenever they do it, when that, when it was CPR training, the gunnery sergeant, we had gunnery sergeants, uh, in our, um, boot and, uh, they, they asked us to come up. I volunteer first. And he says, you know how to do this? And I don't know how to do it. Uh, you tell sore shit. You don't know anything about this. Yeah, but how bad? I didn't see it happen yet. You know? So failure wasn't, it was an option. Failure was an option. But it wasn't as bad as the 10th guy to try it. Yeah. The 10th guy. And that's the way I, I always viewed things when I, you know, it's, it's trying to say like this, you go show up at a party and people are like, oh, look at that girl over there and stuff like that. I know we're gonna, I say, I'll go over there, you know, and stuff like that. And I'll get shot down real, right away. I wasn't, I wasn't overly confident, but it made, it appear as if I was overly confident. But they didn't know what was going on behind in my head. I was doing it say, it didn't matter if I, I wouldn't call it failure. I would call it a learning process. I learned something that didn't work at that time. Whatever it was. Whenever there was a first, there was ever a first, we're going to do this this week. Okay, who would like to do it first? I said, I'll do it. Get Jim to do it. Get Jim. Uh, Jim will do it. Jim will try it first. I mean, it, what, it, uh, it's a strategy. And I think it has worked well for me. Whenever there's something new and some says, I mean, I won't necessarily try f- be a, a tester of food. I wouldn't want to be like one of those guys for the the king or queen, the food taster. Yeah. Hey, when that was a Billy Boombach needs a food taster. Mm. Hey, I put lion. Jim ain't the guy that. for that. No, <laughs> put lion in his coffee. That's a line from Pope in, uh, the Pope of Greenwich Village. But um, but this over confidence where it comes in. I see. I, I was gauging that. That it seems like I'm confident. I don't. I don't move smoothly. I don't have a, a short gait about me, but I'll uh, I'll pretend, and I'll tell people. You say it's it's. I'll just pretend that they said, "Well, are you confident doing this?" Sometimes when I had to fill in as a speaker, they said, "Do you have anything to say?" And I said, "No." I you give me twenty minutes. I'll, I'll think about it. Try. It. Do you need it? Because if you don't need it, I wouldn't do it because I don't know how it's going to turn out. But I'd be willing to try and i want you to know i didn't have anything prepared so it's like an, an impromptu it's uh, an emergency situation just think of it how you how you react in an emergency situation that i i walked into a um i was in treasury i walked into a room one time a computer uh was smoking and then the um a small fire started under the desk so I went to the surge protector and I unplugged it. I went under the desk and unplugged it while everyone was standing around just staring at it. And I just went and looked for the cord and stuff like that. And I said, it looked like I was confident or something like that. And I said, I just wanted to be able to do something. Jim, can you do something? And I said, sure, here, unplug this and then I spray it. Here's, here's, you know, it. some people, some people process yeah. like that. Um, even in law enforcement, yeah. I mean, there's police officers that fall in those same categories. Yeah. You have those who, without question, rush towards the sound of gunfire. And then you have those that say, ooh, hold on a second. Maybe I should be looking for cover. Where did that come from? What are we dealing with? Is there one assailant, two assailants? And yet you have those that say, there's no time for questions it's time for action and come what may and off they go. And you, you have, it's different personality types. I, I, and I would say this. I, I've been in, I've been in situations where I did not make the right decision. I told you about the little, uh, the, the, the learning disabled boy in Philadelphia. Yeah. Tried to get on the train tracks and instead of going into the break of the trains and because the train was stopped, uh, I tried to open up the, the doors where I was working against, uh, electric motors and stuff like yeah. that. These other guys walk, <laughs> who walked around, just walked around the, <laughs> the thing. So I, I'm not saying I make the right decision. No, at but all your times. your reaction to do something came probably immediately. Well, this there's sometimes like if I I've been around where uh, 
infrequently, just where gunshots were, uh, it sounded like gunshots were fired. And there's certain times wherever you are where running forward is going into cover. Can be. Yeah, well, if you're in the open and you could be running away where the cover is further away or the cover is closer, do you know what I mean? Where you get, where, there's the object. Well, I would say this. In gunfire, movement is your friend. Mm-hmm. If there's no cover, you have your ability to move. Oh, yeah. And it's very hard to fire. Sometimes to move it forward. If you're in the open, though, if you're in the open. Moving is your friend. You have yeah, to moving. move. Yeah. I mean, standing there wondering what do I do, you're a still yeah, target. Yeah. No, better to be a moving target. How did we get on this subject? Didn't I don't know. But didn't we say I didn't want to talk about guns no more? We were talking about guns. I just saw this funny thing. We were talking about seen pet shaming? Oh, the temperature. We were talking about them. You, you should not shame a pet, and you should never yell at a pet, or you should never yank on them, or say, I just read this right before. Okay, but yeah, right I'm before talking about pet shaming where, like, you know, like if your dog ate all of your um, slippers, and then they... Hang a Post sign a on them. Picture of the dog and they <laughs> hang a sign on me. It's like I ate all of mom's slippers. Oh, but only the left ones. Right? Like all this shit. Oh, that's all right. I found one where somebody was posting there's a bunch of people posting fish shaming pictures of their fish. Right? So there's How like this too? one is like a, a little puffer fish and it goes, I sometimes eat my friends. <laughs> <laughs> it's hilarious. <laughs> And then there's another one. He was like, I bully the other fish. It's an angel fish, by the way. It's a very beautiful striped angel fish. And another one that um, rips all the plants out of the bottom of the fish tank. So it was like, I rip all the plants out for fun. And this is why I can't have nice things. You have an and iguana mean? They, I didn't see one. It was, <laughs> there's another one. There's another beta fish where it says, I eat my friends. Right. And then. Well, how, um, how about with that? With that, the. Um, this is just awesome. There's a real. Uh, the, the the one with the blonde woman yelling. Okay, and, yes, uh, and then the cat. It's, it's okay. just all over the no. place. I even I fucking stupid like me. I put I oh. put one in. I did a meme with that. Oh. I created a one. And she goes. I said a white claw, and then the cat says a white claw is the uh, hard club soda, and the cat. I put over the cat and says, "You can have a vodka and soda." Which is the same fucking thing if you put a little lime in and stuff right. like that. That's what I say. And, okay, I uh, have the best. But she, one I of always those. thought that was, uh, I thought that was what's her name, Kate Hudson. It's not. It looked like Kate Hudson no, a little. This is one she... of the things from The Bachelorette where the guy. Not like, Bachelorette, Real Housewives. Real Housewives. I thought it was the. Oh, I'm sorry, The Bachelor. The Bachelor. I think it's Real Housewives. I thought it was The Bachelor because this lady got mad Housewives. because she he humped her, and then. Real Housewives, I think. I think her it's someone. I think what happened. Okay. Anyway, this is the best one one I've ever gotten today. It's the same lady, the pointing mad lady and a cat meme, right? Yeah, what does it say? Gay porn? Gay porn? (laughs) Right. So because the name of my little boat, the brand of that little boat back there is called a cape horn. Yeah. And when you say it 10 times fast, it's always going to sound like gay porn. Gay porn, gay porn, gay porn. Oh, is this someone that I saw one today said the roads are icy outside. And it goes, uh, uh, slipper shit or chicken shit. It sounded like almost like chicken shit. <laughs> shit. There's a cat, a board this, cat this looking at vegetables. This one was super funny today, especially because we just fixed the cape But that's horn. real high, that's real housewives. And, and then. Cause her husband, her cape. husband passed away or something like that. Right. So, but it's weird. I mean, you could make your own up, but the problem is people don't know. Did you see now I learned Hillary? on a Google thing, do you know how to put text? I could put text on a photo. You can make your own. Yeah, I mean, you can. But did you see the one with the cat and Hillary? Instead of the blonde lady pissed off with her pointing finger, it was yeah. Hillary. And she just said, hello, kitty. And he goes, help me. <laughs> <laughs> Hillary who? Hillary Swank? Um, sure. Oh. Oh, it's this thing where she's not it in was, office, it, it was, but our president, was, who's a criminal, it was <laughs> it's one of those, they're, it they're was, so obsessing about a woman that's not in office, was, and uh, the guy that's uh, colluding with foreign powers and is going to have Turkey over here, and we're just going to ignore everything he has. He's been doing. But of course, and, yes, and Hillary, who's not in power, of course. Look at her. No, see, anytime anybody mentions Hillary, I'm going to have to mention like 10 things about she, this guy. I don't is she know. running again? No. no. No, no, no. See? No, and I would say, <laughs> I hope not. So, so yeah, this this chicken shit uh, guy who's head here shows up at the veterans uh, 
thing and you know he never did anything brave in his life once <laughs> not once well no he did he did he did one brave thing you know unprotected sex with a uh, porn star I was, who, 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 uh, oh bill donald trump oh oh you don't believe that oh, i don't i don't know he anything paid, about well he paid her i thought you were talking a about a couple hundred thousand bill. he paid her a lot of money for not having sex well he paid the one, one hundred and forty thousand. Yeah. He paid another one, slightly less. Yeah. And those are the two we know about. Yeah. Oh, that's admitted. And he's the anointed one. He is the anointed one. No, <laughs> evangelist. I'm and surprised. Anyone that... who takes George Washington's medal, the Purple Heart, and yep. says, "I've always wanted one of these," and puts it in his pocket, takes it from the hand of a veteran. Who was offering it to him for whatever reason? I don't know why the fuck you would do that. And he puts it in. A, what he should have said was, "You know, you earn this. This is yours. I cannot take this in good faith." Another, I always no, wanted one. Well, no you, other, no you other, your no choice, other president Chuck. would have taken it. No other of president. Of course not. No other president. This guy is just this chicken shit, chicken hawk guy. <laughs> he's, he's a mob he's, boss. Yeah, and they make all these, and people, someone's talking about Benghazi and said, how many fucking Americans have been killed since this guy's been president because of his bullshit stuff? How many Ukrainians have been killed because he's withholding? Uh, how many Kurds? How many Kurds? Yeah, our allies. Did you see that Mike Tyson posted, though, and said that Jeffrey Epstein didn't kill himself? <laughs> you think Trump had, <laughs> oh, you mean Trump had him killed? Because Trump was friends with him, too. Yeah. Killing me. Nope. That's what Trump, saying. Trump, and uh, oh, Epstein's Epstein was pretty eclectic. He had friends yeah. all over. No, he had spectrum. friends all over. Trump was his friend, so so the only thing they're do that that's a right now. It's, that's a pointing just, fingers in a thing. But we got real things. We got people, real people in our government. They're going to be testifying tomorrow. Yeah, they're going to testify tomorrow. Day. It's, it's going to be open test. They were begging for it, and then they they what? 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 they said shit about Vindman, the decorated. Uh, Iraqi war veteran said, "Oh, well, he's he's a Jim, spy. Jim, he's a spy." Jim. Jim, you're you're an American until you disagree with with them. the president. Yes, yeah. that's right. Then you're no longer. Then you got to point at PizzaGate, human and all scum, make up stuff. I'm. You know what? It's a little sickening to have this much derision being applied to to fellow citizens in in trying to break up. Oh, Bill Taylor, the guy that's uh, testifying. One of you guys testifying. He's a Vietnam. He's a Vietnam War veteran. The the war this guy avoided, and he says they're disloyal, and he they're pointing out the whistleblower as the whistleblower is the pro well. No, they're not this. They're not saying that the it's a lie now. They're not saying it's a lie now. They're trying to go. It's not illegal or they're saying the process is wrong but they're not saying and they're not and they're saying the transcript but they have a copy of the recording now the recording of the well, phone one call, of the witnesses it's on a listen it's on to a the entire server. call yeah and we'll hear that testimony yep we'll hear that so testimony. it'll go wherever it goes all yep. oh, about the whistleblower no about the about crime the, about the quid uh, pro quo with bribery. the ukrainian it's classified yeah. as bribery yeah oh. using yeah I have a funny one though. I have a customer that came in the other day and we, you always have to have their email address, mm -hmm. you know, just for contact information. Mm -hmm. And their uh, email address was squid pro quo <laughs> at <laughs> gmail. <laughs> yeah. It was pretty awesome. Squid. Yeah. Squid pro quo. Yeah. Well, there's going to be some people that are going to still believe this guy though, right? Well, it's like religion, isn't it? You yep. can prove it nine ways to Sunday that. This couldn't happen, but nope, nope. You're challenging. There this you're challenging my group. There's an evangelical uh, preacher, this woman who says when she's walking on the White House lawn, she believes she's walking on hollow ground because Trump's there. He is the chosen the, one. The He's chosen come one. out and said it. The himself. most anti-Christian person I ever met. If there's such a thing, if there's such a thing, who doesn't believe one iota, which is kind of funny. That they do. He's the one. He, he never goes he's to church. Smart enough to know where his he never is at, goes though. to church. He'll throw. Say you know. It's just the, every other every other president in the last twenty years 
went to church. Even pretended, even if you say they weren't, okay, he doesn't even pretend to go to church. No. He does not pretend to go to church. He has no idea. I mean, whether, I know you don't believe it, but he pretends to believe it. He pretends to believe it so they believe him. The people that believe in the voodoo witch doctor stuff, you know, that I'm, we're the chosen people and we're, this is the guy that we're, this is the guy we're going to choose, the overweight guy with the bad comb over that gets people lie about his physical fitness. But he believes in the same the thing. The guy that's my they weight. Believe the in. guy that's my weight. But he supports same and believes the same things they do. He hates the same people they hate. Yeah. As it was recently yeah. told to the me. The guy that's brother. the same height and weight as I am. Purportedly. You know that? Yeah. That, and that doctor has since come out and said he, Trump wrote that letter, not the doctor. But that's the first one. The, the admiral, the one. Yeah, no pressure there, right? Yeah, yeah. The admiral wrote that one. So we're going to take a little break now. We're going to get away from politics on this one. But don't mention someone that's not in office right now when there's someone in office that should be in jail. <laughs> the, guy, the guy is shouldn't even be in office. Sleazy. Right yes. All right, new topic when we come back. Yes. If you want to get your information about the Florida Keys straight from the locals who live here and the ones who love it here, we've got you covered. Visit 43keys.com as your source for everything Florida Keys. Sign up for our newsletter and you'll always be up to date on all the Keysy stuff that's going on down here. Go to 43keys.com. That's the number four, the number three, keys.com and sign up today. My my recent Cape Cape, Cape Horn Cape Horn, the yeah. name of my little boat. Yeah. Well, the brand Cape Horn Cape Horn. Say it. Cape Horn Cape, Cape. Horn Cape Horn Cape Horn Cape Horn Cape Horn Cape Horn Cape Horn. It sounds like Cape Horn. Right. So of course my boss sends me the the meme earlier today, and of course I was trying to find the meme all by myself. So. Just, you know, word to the wise, don't ever go into your Google search and type in Cape Horn Gay Porn Meme. Oh, if you put gay porn in, it's just going to And that's come. what happened is gay I just porn. got massive amounts of websites popped up with gay porn. So I was like, well, XXX, that's not what I was looking for. <laughs> but it was funny. And we laughed. Well, well, like we're going to talk about um, if Cookies. you're at work. Well, years ago. 19 years ago, when you got on the, you're, you're working on a computer and the internet was this wondrous, magical, Remember Neverland that? place where you could get. Dial up America Online. No, no, we were, we were at work, at work. You had a little, you had the DSL lines and all that stuff coming up and they were faster. And uh, if you weren't careful, all of a sudden, if you hit the wrong link, you could get something that says, I'm looking at porn. It's, uh, Do you uh, remember uh, when I'm looking you at porn. It's only like, use the phone line? And if you only had one phone line going into your yeah, house, you that can, you could only be on the interwebs? Oh God, or, yeah. Yep. If somebody picked up the phone or called you and it would kick mm-hmm. you offline, you'd be like, stop calling me. <laughs> no, but the, the people didn't really dial understand. Up. First, dial up. You first started using it. You had dial up and you could bring up. Yep. And then what kind of things could you bring up? You bring up like text screen, some chat room. I was going to say, it wasn't ch- chat rooms. Really chat rooms. Because, yeah. right, right? well, chat rooms, because text didn't use up that much thing. But once pictures, if you had to download, you're trying to get a picture. Holy shit. With that. Like in 2000. I remember my old keyboard that had like yeah, springs wait forever. Yeah, wait underneath forever. like every single thing. My old keyboard would be like, dunk, 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 like every time you hit one of them. It was so porn crazy. was, then when you were looking at porn, any type of porn, regular porn, straight porn, and all that, it's, you're, you're looking at it it's slow, getting off your computer, I mean, getting your computer just to turn on would take forever. <laughs> And then sometimes trying to get out of it. Oh my! It seemed manly long. Luckily, I wasn't that adept, so I wasn't able to explore all the nuances of porn and thing that were out there. Nowadays, if you want to go to these sites, they pop up. 
the videos are smooth, streaming, great video <laughs> quality. I'm just assuming because I'm assuming. talking about I'm assuming, yeah, right, because yeah. YouTube and all those type videos, any type coming up. But there's always uh, before you you'd have you knew about history a little, but it was no big deal because you had the whole you had the whole address line and people really didn't look at that that much because it wasn't that detailed like on a Google search or um, a Safari search, it wouldn't show you a list of names. It just should show you a list of addresses. Remember that about 20 years ago? Yeah. Be a list of addresses, and you have to see what the address was. But now, when you do a oh, like search. The World Wide Web address, the www. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It give you the web name, not the web the, address. Yeah, it would give you the name of the search now. <laughs> yeah. The search, and that's like the Cape Horn gate. Did, did you ever do the uh, Penn Island one? What's Penn Island? <laughs> Penn Island. Penis land. Yes, Penis the Damon's over there with his smirky grin. We've actually gotten a couple of our employees on that one. Oh my god, that'd um, be great. <laughs> with your his previous I'm post uh, that on this shipping thing. receiving person. I'm gonna I'm gonna post had, some I'm gonna post some pictures. He he had her well, go to Penn to, Island. Oh, that could be mean though, wouldn't it? And then we pretended like nah, the big really. bosses were calling, going wonder, yeah, wondering why she was on porn sites Next, and uh, scared the crap no. out of her. But if I put the vacation, uh, vacation uh, pictures, I'm going to give it – we'll put this – I'll put some beautiful – whenever we go to one of the keys, I'll take some nice pictures and yeah. activity pictures I mean, and go just, and just say – and, and, and go, if you're a listener – if you're a long-term listener, you won't be taken in for it, but watch out for Penn Island. Watch out for Penn Island. Yeah, and they got they got the uh, current receptionist with that one as well. Oh, God. So they, yeah, they had her look up Penn Island. I'm going to make it com. as enticing as possible. And then what what shows up when you put Penis Island? Uh, I d- I'm not quite sure. There's Lemonade Party. There's <laughs> Lemonade Party? Uh, oh, well, that's... That go that two girls one cup. Wait wait that's wait. 30 what, years. What's lemonade party? Yeah, it's a. <laughs> it's a bunch of old dudes peeing on each other. That's that's great. What movie? The shit on. What? Inside inside his pee hole. Oh, wait, you, see, know, the listeners can't hear wait, what Tyler wait, just how, said. Wait wait let me. The, yeah. Wait, you mean the dildos going inside his urethra? And that's what? What was How's that? How's that one possible? Called? Kids How's in the possi- sandbox. Why? How does that How's have that anything possible? to do with the sandbox? You could put a dildo right up someone's penis. I d- I don't know how that. How do you stretch that out? Would that? Maybe, you know what? Maybe that's why that lady was returning that one that I saw earlier today. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, I'm I'm at a loss for words. Come on, Joe. You gotta like, chime in on this one. What are we talking about? We're Papa was distracted. Yeah. Tyler, tell him what he, you told me. Tyler is saying back school, when I was in middle school, high school, school these weird, websites. weird websites that you would pick up. So Kids in the Sandbox was one of them that everybody talks about. Right. So to get your friends to look at these god-awful, horrible videos, and one of them... Kids in the Sandbox was a guy fully hard taking a dildo into his own urethra. That's called sounding. Let's go. <laughs> oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. How's that possible? It's I don't know how it's possible, but when you're All dealing right, with... Damon just snorted from the back, dealing and with fetishes, I'm dying laughing right now. So it's a thing. let's start enlarging it. No, they take these metal rods and they go down the pee hole of your... Oh, metal um, rods. Oh, it's not like a dildo. No, they work no, Tyler is saying that they they work it up yeah, to the point uh, where they... Listen, they work it. up to the size of a dildo? People do weird shit. You know, they... It's like the original... Barnyard like, animals and... Metal vibrator dart. The, like the yeah. original woman's metal vibrator dart. So maybe like an inch in diameter, I guess. Yeah. I'm just That's I'm so just amazing. repeating what Tyler is saying listen, since he's man. not on that that audio that right now. Weird, weird. Shit. Oh no! But no. there's a word for it. See, there's a term. You know. See, once again, I think your dis- <laughs> my incredulity is not that someone would do it. My incredulity is that you can expand 
the urethra that one. <laughs> now, see, you, you're reading me the wrong way. No. <laughs> I understand completely that someone would be turned no. on by that. Not that I would be turned on that. Right. But you I know, understand that completely. There yeah. is a fucked up medical slash mental condition that has a lot to do with people shoving things in their urethra. And the only reason I really know about that is because of Dr. Mass. And Dr. Mass, I'm not saying what his real name is, but Dr. Mass is a customer of mine. Mm-hmm. And he is a ER doctor in yeah. downtown Chicago. Wow. And every time he comes in, he would have like a crazy different story to tell Can me. We get him on like one of those. We voice totally changers? could. He's the one that brings me the beef jerky all the time. And there's some in the fridge, beef by the way. Beef yeah. jerky. But Dr. Mass was telling me that there was a man that would come in. About every six to eight months, mm-hmm. and every single time he came into the ER, it's because he had something different shoved up his urethra, right? And it was many, many things over and over again over all these years. Well, it, he didn't like put a string on it or anything. No, no, no. Like literally, he this guy would shove weird things into his urethra, like a Q-tip that got wedged all the way in, and he had to go through like a, a non-invasive See, wait, surgery, wait a right? Wait a second. That makes sense that someone can, there's certain things like someone says, it, it, the, the, the dildo thing, the one that said, that kind of reminds me of someone saying, what, get, that, that you can't get, there's the physical impossibility of getting that thing in there. I realize it's probably stretchable, but I think at a certain point it would break apart. Well, you would think so, but if over time Maybe they're stretching they it. They said skin could stretch but pretty good. Now, think about, think about, remember when we had the butthole conversation and we looked online about all the different things people shoved up their butthole? Oh yeah, that's not okay. weird. But very but the, similar. I mean, I've seen stuff that came out of my butt. So I know. Very similar. <laughs> I know it gets really huge. No. I mean, I mean, I, right. I, like, remember, is this remember an the Matchbox car? We, remember. <laughs> We saw the Matchbox car. That's car's not a thing. Right. But, uh, okay, light bulb. An entire fucking light bulb. Well, the light bulb. Up your that asshole. Thing that, that intrigues me that the light bulb is, is that, that it didn't break. Yes. Right. And that you would put something that could. Could shatter. Shatter. Up your asshole. I mean, that's, right? I, you know what? It's people, see, people don't understand. My incredulity is not the act. It's not the act. It's the, uh, well, in, in this case, it is the act with the light bulb. Yeah. Because oh. the shards of glass, uh, oh, I don't want to put okay. it in my mouth. I wouldn't, I mean, I'm not saying a thing, even if it's sanitized up, not to put it in my mouth because I think it's over, overtly sexual. I just think, what if it fucking breaks? Right. I got all that fucking glass in my mouth. Okay. I mean, oh, but oh, you fucking let's get kidding back me? Or to anything the, you... weird up your nose? Dude, where they have, every so often someone sticks something up their nose. They have like crayons. You ever see that oh, thing? Yeah, or like they a have corner. outlines of uh, the x-rays of a kid, uh, some guy who's 40 years old and has a crayon. That's been jammed up his nose for 30 years. Yeah. And it's just been there the whole time. Yeah. That's yeah. great. But so listen, right. About this urethra thing, right? So say. Dr. Mass was saying that this guy who's obviously very, um, he's mentally ill. He keeps coming in over and over again. And most of the time, the things that he shoves up there, they can get out. Right. So they stretch the opening of his urethra and they can go in and extract out whatever he shoved into his penis shaft, yeah. basically. Right. This last one. OK. Was a roll of solder. Solder. A roll. <laughs> a roll of solder. Do you know, like a soldering gun, like soldering, yeah, like no, metal. It's, right? up. it's like a okay. roll. Like a- right. The entire thing. Because it's very pliable, very like easily to maneuver metal. And he shoved an entire roll of solder, kept feeding it, feeding it, feeding it all the way through his urethra. And he had a, what looked like a rat's nest in his ab, in his bladder. So even though. Oh, so the pee. They pee. could, they could have tried to go through. With a catheter style, uh, um, like apparatus yeah. and pull it out piece by piece to get the entire roll of solder out of his, um, bladder. They decided this time that they were going to make it painful for him because every single referral they ever gave him to talk to mental health, he discounted. He never went. He never went to follow ups. He never went to anything to go help himself. So this time when they removed the entire roll of solder, they picked up his scrotum and cut his fucking gooch. And they went up that way 
through his bladder to get the whole thing out to cause him such a massive amount of pain to prevent him from doing it again. And he hasn't seen him in four years. And all he you know wanted to so do Even though this person was, was a repeat offender. You six know, months, eight you months, know what's so funny hour. about that thing? You went and said that sounds like really painful. And it was a great story. That's yeah. a, that is an A-plus story. That's an A-plus story. I was not like, ugh, like that. I'm saying, fuck you, guy. Man, you keep on doing that shit. Yeah, you, you deserve it. Like, at that point, I was like, I, I was thinking, oh, these people are... Vo- Violating their Hippocratic oath, exactly. first do no harm, but maybe they may have saved them. They, they did, did it. They on did purpose. it on purpose. So I go because, like this, and they go, "Oh, okay, no, that kind of makes you, sense." It was optional. It was one of the optional yeah, procedures in, for, in place for something like this. And but the guy was just trying to, 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 to. He was trying to stop a leak. Yeah. Well, no, he was just like he's just I weirdly obsessed. What if my pee-pee. right? He what was if just, they heated it up? Oh, yeah. Right. That would have see now that would have been horrible. That would have been torture. That would have been ridiculous. That's but like what they cu- did was they Caligula chose kind they, of thing to do. They chose. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, right. They oh, chose shocking. the option of causing him a little bit more recovery time and pain in the same thing. Right. Instead of it being a two and a half, three hour procedure and letting yeah. all these other patients that are in the hospital that need help. Right. They chose to quickly get it out and cause them a little bit more. Rec- you more know, pain cause- that <laughs> leads me to believe sometimes that there's people in the healthcare uh, vocation that are there to help. Yeah. And there's some people that become doctors that aren't so helpful, like Dr. Mengele. Yo, you well, know Doctor Mangala? Yes, Mangala. of course I know Mangala. Oh my god! Okay, Mangala. Meaning that you went? They go as into, a mother of twins. I hate him truly to a core. By I the know way. we used to do tests on twins I and know. all certain th- sorts uh, sorts of things. And I mean, they uh, especially the German. Mm. He became a doctor in Germany, what? and when he became yeah. a doctor in Germany, they had very stringent. They were, I mean, originally when he became a doctor, I'm imagining. That he became a doctor before the Nazis were ensconced in all their public institutions and stuff like that. Yes, but what they so, did is they gave him the freedom. No, to no, but he explore. he had to go through uh, med school during um, when they, you know, they were into the Hippocratic Oath. The Germans were very uh, at one time were very ethical, philosophical leaders in thought and science. And then some of these doctors, I'm not saying all doctors. I love doctors. Doctors are great. They're healers and things like that. But some of them seem to have a propensity. They don't have as good a bedside manner as others. And some are even worse, meaning they don't necessarily care about the harm they do. But in this particular situation, I thought it was remarkable. It's It's a rarity. Because they... I mean, that guy, he was a repeat offender. Six months, eight oh, months. Oh, no, I, I we, we went and over. he stopped. It. He stopped. No, I, I, I agree with you in that case. Like, I'm just saying cool. there are people out there. There are doctors out there. Um, and we're not that show, true crime show. There was, uh, HBO did uh, some great documentaries. There was a doctor who was uh, a gynecologist, I think it was, uh, accused of raping his patients all the time. All the time. Multiple patients. And they could never get him. They could never get him on DNA. Never get him on DNA. They're always taking blood samples and stuff like that. Couldn't get him. The guy was out and out doing it almost every year he was accused of it. You know what they found out? They found out one of the guys that took his blood, and they realized the blood they were taking, they said the blood didn't look right. It didn't look the right color. And he did a little cl- uh, a close look, and they realized he had a vial implanted under his skin, different blood. It was kind of a, a, a small uh, yeah. tube in there, and he was gi- giving them uh, false samples. And they found and they found the guy. I mean, a fucking brilliant guy. Think about that. Use that brilliance and that kind of thing to surgically implant a blood sample in there that. And it, I, it, it had to be brown or something. And these people are looking at it and saying, well, the, the, the phlebotomist that's uh, taking it says, right. this blood does not look uh, 
uh, healthy or the right color. Well, and then, and then and they did the search and they found out. And that was a doctor. You know what they do now, too, what? is that they actually test uh, uh, for urine, for example. This, my husband's a captain. He's on consortium, yeah. right? So you have to submit to any random urine urine test. Mm-hmm. And then when you first get like your captain's license, especially here, yeah. you have to go in and submit a sample and pass that before you can actually be a U.S. Coast Guard yeah. like accredited captain. So they actually test for more than what we just think. They test for color. They test for temperature. Of course. And I never would have thought of that. Like, just because, I mean, obviously I'm not in the medical industry, so I didn't think, but there was, um. Well, we didn't have to get the urine right then, then. No, he, no, you know what happens? What? Is that there are certain people that they get called in for a random piss test, and they stop on their way there, and they get someone to piss in a cup for them. Yeah. And they try to smuggle it in, and they put it on the heater of their car. And they heat it up. They keep it warm. They keep it warm. They keep it warm. Why do they get it in? When you go in, they can't watch you piss. They can just make sure that you're the only one in the room. Well, how hard would it be to get kind of a prosthetic put over your... Right, but... Put over your... So, for example... And have a little pump. A specific person that we know of... Well, I know, but it's up against your body, right? A specific person that we know of that was put through a random drug test as a captain failed the temperature test. Was it too high? Too high. Too hot. Too hot. Yes. They have what is called a fake penis, which you would put on and it keeps your body temperature. Um, You also have the old school trick of a plastic bag with somebody else's pee and you tape it up underneath your nuts or an Advil bottle and tape it underneath your nuts, all that kind of stuff. Um, But to refer back to Jenna, on your basic um, hometown testing place, no, you are not allowed to have somebody in there to watch you unless you are a repeat offender and have been asked by... uh, PO or anything like that, and then, yes, they can stand in there and watch you. They can't obviously look directly down there, but they can watch your hand movement to make sure you're not pulling something out or ripping open a bag or yeah. anything. And or I after, believe they can frisk you before you go yes. in. Yes. Um, and then the temperature thing, everyone always thinks after you take your piss test, they put the label on the outside. They think that label is an indication of... All right, is there anything? Well, the no. Label, that's on the label, the temperature sensor? Outside on the bottle, so it's a temperature sensor. And once you have entered their facility and have said, hey, I am here to take a urine test, you are not allowed to leave unless you give a full sample. If you go in... What's a, how much is a full sample? Uh, an inch and a half. <clears throat> Oh, I got that seven but times. sometimes. Seven. Oh, I thought you meant size. Okay. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> but if you cannot, but a poop. This you, ten and have, half inches. you have to stay there. <laughs> if you leave because you can't pee or you have to go back to work, mm-hmm. you are forfeiting your license at that point. Wow. Yeah. Huh. Anyways. So, well, well, you can so wait, you got to you got you got fake like, penises you, you can go. Wait, there's they sell these fake penises yes. with the thing? Yeah. Now Tyler Tyler experienced this directly because and not to yeah, e- no, expose uh, you but he's more comfortable peeing sitting down. Right? My my bladder I think I have issues with especially after my motorcycle accident. I was going to say that you don't have to say that on the air. Well, but you, no, but this but is it, how it's true. It's, we it's know like cuz that was a big episode on the uh, Curb your enthusiasm. Yeah. But when Larry David mentioned that, <laughs> everyone he... said, "Why, why, why, why stand where you can Well, sit? hey, when you wake up at two o'clock in the morning and you have to pee, what are you doing? You're gonna pee sitting down. You ain't gonna try and stand there in the dark. And... Oh no, we got it. You got a proximity light? <laughs> no, I don't. Oh, it's great. <laughs> I know. It goes they inside there. It's one. a pr- yeah, yeah, it's a proximity. <laughs> yeah, light. They have the toilet bowl light. Yeah, Bye-bye yeah, yeah. The you can do. Light. <laughs> They're awesome. I mean, you know what? <clears throat> at night. You're right. Hey, I'm not. I'm not judging. No. I did know, but, but it's so funny that you volunteered it. But what I'm I like getting that. at is, I went in. I had drank two bottles of water and a Mountain Dew on the way down there. I yeah. got in there. I, my bladder felt like I had to pee. I tried to pee. I could only produce like maybe a half an inch, and that uh-huh. wasn't enough. 
So they're like, all right, well, you got to sit here and drink water until you can. And I was like, well, I got to go to work. They're like, you can't leave. Can you? Can they give no. you a beer or anything like no. that? No. Oh, no. no. can't have beer. <laughs> so Papa. after about 10 little tiny cups, because you can't have more than they prescribe, because then now your bladder and everything, you're actually um, weakening what you're, might be in your system. Yeah, you might dilute beyond the yeah. point of them mm. being able to detect... Oh, okay. So the only way I was able to actually get enough urine because of my bladder and the pressure and everything, I had to sit down. And I finally was able to produce enough and oh. was luckily able to go back to work. Yeah, I'm up for random pee tests in my job. and um, They suck. Yeah, listen, it's routine. You, you, you go in, they give you the, you know, the, 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 the vial uh, with the temperature strip on the side, the heat, the heat activated mm-hmm. temperature strip. Um, you walk in the room, they close the door, you got to put all your stuff in a bin Yep. and you piss in the thing. And as soon as you're done, uh, they don't want you washing your hands. There's and, and, the, the, and, the, and, the, and where I go, the toilets don't flush. Nope. Uh, and you, uh, so there's nowhere, if you carried a piece of plat, there's nowhere to put anything. They put blue fairy dust in the toilet bowl also. Yeah. So, so you come out, you give them the, 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 the pee What's thing. the blue fairy dust? It's a, it's a activation chemical, oh, I think, yeah, yeah, right. um, that if you try to use bleach, because uh, the old thing was is you dip your fingers in bleach and you kind of pee through your fingers, and it helps that. It shows up if you've used an uh, alternative it chemical. It a, a to masking dilute. agent. So yep. <clears throat> they test Holy for shit. masking agents. Mm-hmm. You know what? At some times at work, I put bleach in water and stuff like that. I would. Um, you know what's funny? At one of these times in my life, I probably... I'm totally clean my urine because of the the shit because of that vaping stuff. <laughs> I used to like the, the you know the marijuana vape, but all that crap in it now, you don't know what to suspend it in. I said, ah, oh, screw it. I'll wait until we get a little more enlightened. <laughs> you know, it's a shame that you guys they don't just take it off of the scheduled drugs. Well, it's part well, of the job. Uh, he wouldn't be able no, to use, take, nor, nor could I, anyway. No, if they take it, if they, wait, if they take off the federal schedule. Nope. nope. Can't use if it. If it becomes 100% legal, I can walk down the street and smoke a joint kind of legal. Yeah. I cannot, and neither can Papa, ever do that. It's because the job regulations we have prohibit the use Oh, I know, but that would, if those. they take it off the thing, obviously they would change. No. The pro- not why, necessarily. Why, why, not the, why do they remove it for alcohol then? I I because alcohol is much <laughs> more abusive. Now than here's it. the thing: is I could drink all night long, yeah, and I can get on my job the next day and drive a boat. But as long as I don't blow over a point oh two, then I have leniency. Doesn't matter if the point oh eight or yeah, any of that. You don't think they'd change that? No, nope, not at no, all. No, there there is there is hope on the horizon, so to speak. You ready? What? They came out with a quantitative qualitative marijuana test and they're refining this test for law enforcement on the road because right now the only test you have is to piss in the cup and if it tests positive you're guilty of DUI but there's no way to tell how much marijuana is dissolved in the urine so someone has just come out and I think it was MIT that came out with it they have to refine it but they're well on their way now. If that comes out, oh, is that the re- that's the reason why? Yes, they wouldn't allow it because there's no way of testing. A positive result means oh. you're under the th- that you have it. Okay, you so, know what? I didn't even think so. About let's it that say way. it comes off anything. schedule. Let's say it's no different than alcohol, and let's say the policies were I and oh, they Tyler should work at. They should definitely they should. There's no they mandate. Sh- they, 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 they 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 should have to. no, but they should they should definitely have a test. That make it put it on par with alcohol. So I agree. Your your the you percentage. A, see, when you blow into the breathalyzer, it, it one it 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 bings when there's the presence of alcohol, but it also quantifies it. It tells you what percentage is in the bloodstream. Mm-hmm. You can't make the DUI without that. So you can't really. You shouldn't really be making a DUI for marijuana without that same amount of knowledge, right? And then on the other side of that is pharmacologically, what constitutes under the influence with marijuana and at what level? Yeah. And I don't think there's any agreement on that. 
what THC level constitutes I, I being I under the realize. influence. I thought it was, I thought the ban was more of the illegality of the usage of it, not being able to test for the presence of it because someone's ability yeah. to be able, I forgot about no, that. No, you're. I didn't think that way. If it just comes up, you're done. Yeah. Because it is an illegal and you shouldn't well, have because, it. Well, because, wait, well, because it's illegal. Right. No, but, but the other part is you can't test for someone being under the influence. Correct. That's, that's the one thing. That's the one thing, the reason why to keep it up there, right? Did I, I see it? Yeah, you, you, because obviously if it was like alcohol where you could test right away, say, well, 0.02, 0.02, whatever the level they say is when, where you're when those inhibited your performance and say you can't do, you can't be at this level, then when, when yes, those make complete When sense. those P tests come back in law enforcement, the only thing it shows is presence of marijuana. Yeah. Not even the labs can say how much. Can say how much. Oh, really? Wow. Well, if, if I'm sure you can chemically break it down and someone can say oh, how so many, someone threw how some many in, parts someone you know threw how expensive it, that someone threw some uh, marijuana in some uh, 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 a mixed green salad and the guy took uh, you're going to come up positive oh now. man you can, well and the other thing is like I have what? a bunch of friends I can't I even mention that I have a bunch of friends that asked me I said that yeah. that if it becomes legal would I be able to do it yeah. and well that's what we were talking about and I even told them I was like well, if it became legal, would you like your pilot to be smoking? I mean, no, no. no what I mean is, it's, it's what I mean is, say, like drinking, you could test for the yeah, president. No, I understand that. Yeah. So that that's the one thing they don't know. I, I I've never even been through the thought uh, process of what stipulates impaired. And that, and I didn't even get up to that yet because I, I was saying, oh, well, of course they're not going to smoke right before they go. Oh, and they go, oh, wait, oh, of course they can't test for it. Yeah. And then the other thing is, is if it becomes legal and you have your medical card, you cannot have it concealed. It's one or the other. Oh, so you can't be a, uh, a captain and you can't kill somebody. <laughs> I can be a captain. I can have my concealed, but I'm if, just kidding. If I'm I get joking. my medical card, joking. I can't have. My concealed, I could probably no, still no. I mean, a, you could be a captain and have probably. your medical marijuana license. I mean, that's the legalities that they have to work out, and that's what we were talking about. No, they can't do that. You know, there would probably be a they problem can't do with that. that. Yeah. yeah, they have to have a problem with that. So. No, I'm mean, saying the funny that you brought the concealed. I go, I can understand why they concealed because it's illegal right now. But with the obviously, if you think it about being able to test for it, I didn't even process that that you can't process. Uh, how how much the person when they smoked right before they could have smoked a whole joint right before they got on the plane? Yeah, it makes total sense that they right. can't do it until they do it. And you know what? I believe that if the power of the industry is any uh, testament, they will come out with the money. They will come out with the money to make a test to say, listen. We want people to be able to use it and use it responsibly and not use it right before they go into work and things like that. Well, where do you, the push to have a quantitative test for yeah. marijuana comes from the fact that it's it's decriminalized in the states. Yeah. And these MIT people, they're not stupid. I mean, think of how many how much stuff the technical colleges have produced. Yeah. In this case, MIT, this gaggle of student scientists, right? What's they're not going gaggle. It's a gaggle. It's a group. Goose. Geese? A geese. Maybe they are. Gooses. Maybe they squawk Point a lot. Out of murder. It's or a group. A, a group. Okay. Anticipating that the federal government takes it off schedule. Yeah. Everyone and their mother is going to need this machine or the technology to make those machines. And they're theoretically sitting on a gold mine. Oh, no. I think it's great. great so idea. it's coming. There's no doubt. It's coming. I know. Well, I just think it's all of a play for uh, bigger companies to be able to control it because they're not, they haven't, the, the reason why they can't is because you can grow it right out of that. You can take that artificial plant out of that pot Shh, right over there. Stop telling everybody that my orchid is fake. God. They can take that artificial plant, <laughs> put soil in it. We get it. You get it, a male and female plant next to each other and make their own thing. Remember, yeah. Yeah. 
No, poppy seeds no, poppy tested seed positive, positive for, for cocaine. It's for opium. Uh, yeah, opiate. It's a, they, it's, oh, it's, it's a, for, a false positive. Yeah, for false positive. Yep. Aline uh, Bennis. Most of the new tests, by the way, have uh, solved that problem. Yeah. Yeah. Was yep. that? Yeah. That There's was thresholds. Aline. They had the wrong threshold. Well, I hear people are injected poppy seeds into their urethra and their penis. Oh, my yeah, God. On that be. note, we're going to end it. It's 55 minutes. Ow. 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 Now, after all this shit, they shoved up. Their yeah, but penis. poppy seeds are like kidney stones, for Christ's what, sake. Why Jesus. Why would you put a kidney stone back in there? Ooh, let's just shove that thing back up the People hole. People were shoving out. light bulbs up their a holes. Got any rocks? Did you ever good. actually see a kidney stone under a microscope? Yeah, it looks like an asteroid. It does. It does a kidney stone. Yeah, I don't sharp think a poppy edges. seed's ouch, like ouch, an ouch. asteroid, is it? I don't, I don't know. Think so. It's I round. Think it is seeds round. around. If you put them I'm up sure your ass, be be. If you put them up your ass, they might look like an asteroid. <laughs> <laughs> that was some. What, uh, what was that? Family vacation. He says you got asteroids. No, but my dad does. It's a hard time uh, pooping. <laughs> okay, this is Jim the Keys bartender. I'd like to thank uh, Papa Joe and Jenna Kelly. Come on, say goodbye, guys. Goodbye, goodbye, guys. Oh my God, almost two hours today. Goodbye.